everybody, welcome back to Slavic Saturday, where we talk about Slavic history, mythology, and folklore. My name is Brendan Noble, author of the Frostmark Chronicles, which is my fantasy series based on Slavic mythology. This week, we're finally returning back to gods again on the Slavic Saturday video, and we are talking about a god who is kind of an interesting character, and we'll talk about why, who is pictured often as a three-headed god, and that is Triglav. Before I jump too far into Triglav, though, I just wanted to announce that my first book in the Frostmark Chronicles called A Dagger in the Winds is available for pre-order, or at least the ebook is across platforms from the United States across the world. So check out the links down in the description below to grab your, your pre-order copy for that. If you're looking for a, a physical copy, either in paperback or hardcover form, Pre-orders are currently available in the United States from my store. If you're looking for our other stores, those will become available on May 15th with the cover reveal. So stay tuned for that. And reminder that you can subscribe to my newsletter down in the description below as well to receive a free copy of the prequel novella, The Rider in the Night, coming out on May 15th as well. So stay tuned for that. But now let's dive into talking more about Triglav. So Triglav is an interesting character in Slavic mythology as he plays an interesting role as a god, but more than just a god, he's more of a combination of different gods and their roles kind of combined into one figure. It's a weird complexity that I'll try to pick apart here. And so his regionalization occurs differently from the east, west, and south. He's often mentioned mainly as the west, though the description of three gods as the tree glob can appear as well among more eastern slavs as well and tree glob is almost always pictured as a three-headed god sometimes they can be goat heads sometimes they are different types of appearances sometimes they are very similar appearances but regardless it's a, he's a three-headed god who can reference different things a lot of what we know about tree glob comes from a christian priest named Otto of Bamberg, who came to the town of Szczecin, which is a town in modern-day Poland, especially the northwestern part of Poland, in an area that is typically described as Pomerania, and historically, and this section of kind of the West Slavs is a very interesting one because the Pomeranians historically often had elements of Slavic mythology within it, but they often have their own twist on things. We've seen that through potentially gods such as Chernobog being mainly among the Palabian or Pomeranian Slavs while not necessarily being present among the other ones, and Triglav may be one of these as well. So Otto visited Szechen and noticed and observed much of the things that the pagan Slavs were doing in this area. And one of the things they worshipped at was a three-headed statue that they called Triglav. There are temples as well to Triglav, and the statue showed a three-headed man with gold covering his eyes and his mouth, and often the eyes potentially were looking one to the sky, one to the earth, and one to the uh, underworld. There's different descriptions of that we don't know for sure. But there's this idea of the three realms that Triglav references here. And Otto talks about how the, he believed that Triglav, through these people, was referencing the heaven, the earth, and the inferno, which would be the Christian version of heaven, earth, and hell. But potentially in the Slavic context, this could be referencing Pravia or Prav. Yavia, Yav, or Navia Nav, which is the realm of the gods, the realm of the living, and the realm of the dead. This is different because to the Slavs, the afterlife typically was thought to be a paradise for everyone and not necessarily just like heaven or hell, positive or negative. And here this gives credence to the theory as well that Triglav doesn't reference one specific god, but as the reference of typically whatever the region believed the three highest gods to be. And that's because typically in Slavic mythology, these three realms of Pravia, Yavia, and Navia were thought to be realm ruled by different gods. Pravia was often thought to be ruled by Perun. In different regions, this kind of became true as well. In Kiev and Novgorod, where Triglav is also thought to be mentioned as a combination of these three gods. 
in Kiev, Perun was mentioned as well as Dajbog, who is the god of the sun, as well as Stribog, who is the god of the wind. And in Novigrad, it is Perun again, along with Velis, who is the god of the lowland cattle and underworld, and as well as Zvarog, who is the god of celestial fire and creation. And depending on these regions and how powers were split, it potentially could give credence in combination with this idea that we see from Otto that Triglav represents the gods that controlled these three different realms, and therefore Triglav was a personification or a description of the three highest gods in pagan belief. And this can kind of make sense. Different religions sometimes come up with these ideas as a easier way of saying, instead of saying all the three gods, perhaps they just used Trigov to kind of represent the triad that was the most powerful. And Otto witnessed different rituals being done before this idol, as and then the temples uh, for Triglav, sacrifices being made, as well as a type of war ritual that was done with Triglav, representing him riding a black horse. A, a horse was guided between different lances, and it was meant to describe if they the if the horse stepped over all the lances and didn't touch any of them, it thought that the war was going to go well, and if it didn't, then it thought the war would probably go poorly. Which is interesting as well, and why some people believe, at least among the Pomeranians, that Triglav could be a war god. And I say a lot of these things because I'm not completely confident about what Triglav was considered worshipped as among the early Slavs. Typically, we can get a pretty good conclusion from looking at different stories that we hear about today or the occasional writing that we have from either Christian missionaries or Slavs afterwards, even once writing had been brought to the Slavs. But Triglav it kind of fits this odd comparison where we have these stories from Otto and then some appearances among the Pomeranians, perhaps as a god in himself, while among more Eastern stories, Triglav seems to be this idea of a three different gods in one, while Pomeria potentially being the same thing. So I don't know exactly how to describe it, and I'm curious of what people, other people who have researched this think as well. I've read a lot of scholarly articles, and most people seem to believe that he is more of the epithet of three different gods as one instead of the idea of one tree god representing a single god. And I say this because I want to be honest with you guys and make sure that I'm not trying to misrepresent things that are still being debated today because we know so little about Slavic mythology. The Pomeranians especially were influenced a lot by Celts and Germans who they border, so there was a lot more of the interaction between them than perhaps more of the Eastern Slavs who may. There was different influences there as well, and so these there's overlap, but also differences among regions. Then the idea of having a multi-headed god for the Pomeranians wasn't... Uh, Triglav wasn't the only one for them. There was Svetovit as well, who was a four-headed god, uh, especially on the island of Rugen, which used to be a Slavic area. And he represented different directions, as well as possibly... Uh, winds or the heavens and the underworld and many different things. So perhaps the Pomeranians had different gods that were a combination of Celtic, Germanic, and Slavic influences that Triglav could be a representation of as well. And I find a lot of this fascinating. Even if my I myself cannot draw a conclusion for you guys, I think it's interesting to analyze these different things and talk about what the different cultures believed, even within the sub-regions of Slavic belief. So if you want to comment on some of these things in the comments below, feel free to add your own insight. Maybe you know something or saw something that I haven't been able to see. Maybe you have some type of insight. Or maybe you have other questions that people can talk about. I'm always interested in hearing from you guys and hearing what other people have to say about Slavic mythology. And that's because I want to do, promote discussion. And lastly, in the Frostmark Chronicles, Triglav doesn't make an appearance yet, at least in the, A Dagger in the Winds, because of a lot of these things with Triglav not being able to be really described as a single god, I didn't want to try to misrepresent that. So he may appear later as a series, kind of as a description of the, the three highest gods, or maybe he might not, not appear at all. Regardless, it's kind of fun. There's a lot of different elements in Slavic mythology, and I have to decide which ones I can include in the story and which ones not, because I don't want to confuse people with too many different names.
But that's all I have for you today on this Slavic Saturday video. I hope you enjoyed it as chaotic and random as this one kind of was. And I come out with these videos every Saturday and we're going to continue discussing more gods, demons, and coming soon, dragons. Until then, I look forward to seeing you next Saturday.